Okay, my presentation today, or our class today, uh, I will uh, explain uh, further yeah, about uh, the uh, topics of knowledge organization. Yeah, uh, so to, for class today is uh, for week two, yeah, week two uh, lecture on knowledge organization. So we will discuss about these three uh, components. Number one, uh, the knowledge organization. Yeah. K organization. So uh, this is very interesting uh, topic yeah, for those who want to uh, write about the K assignment, yeah, uh, K uh, organization or knowledge organization. And then number two, can knowledge uh, be organized? And uh, I believe uh, your answer will be yes. Yeah, but uh, I will explain further. And then uh, the personal involved in this process, yeah, in knowledge organization process. Okay, before we go uh, further, uh, let's understand yeah, the, uh, or let's identify the concepts of knowledge asset. Yeah, what is knowledge asset? Yeah, as we uh, discussed last week, yeah, uh, knowledge asset can be. Uh, Ingat lagi tak, last week saya ada sebut tentang uh, the tacit, explicit knowledge and then uh, things like um, artifacts uh, for organization. Yeah. Uh, apa lagi yang saya sebut tentang uh, experience, yeah. uh, experience among uh, staff. Yeah. So, uh, itu semua uh, kita rujuk eh, kepada uh, proses berikut. Eh. So, knowledge asset actually they relate with this component. Yeah. So when we say knowledge asset, uh, normally they refer to assets of organizations. Yeah. Asset for business process or business uh, company lah. Eh? Business company in this uh, class, yeah, kita refer sebagai corporate organization. It's a corporate organization or corporate business. Yeah? So, uh, kita wujud di sini, knowledge asset is the, uh, are the activities, yeah? activities or maybe processes which involve in knowledge cycle, yeah? knowledge cycle ataupun knowledge process yang diperlukan untuk uh, business process. Apa dia punya cycle? Uh, knowledge asset can be a process in that particular organization. It can be a process. It can be SOP. Yeah, it can be standard operating procedure for uh, business activity. It can be a uh, financial process. Yeah, financial process. Macam mana pengeluaran invoice, macam mana pengeluaran receipt, macam mana proses bayaran dibuat dan sebagainya. Yeah. Itu juga adalah asset for the company. Asset for business process. Alright, number two. Of course, knowledge asset is a product of the company. Yeah, product of the company or, or business uh, uh, organization just now. When we say product, there are two lah. It can be tangible product or intangible product as services as well. Yeah, product and services. Yeah, dalam uh, ekonomi sekarang, kita bukan saja output in terms of a physical product but services also uh, can be considered as the product. Yeah? Uh, biasanya kita sebut product boleh jadi uh, ada physical product, ada outputnya dan juga apa satu lagi adalah perkhidmatan. Perkhidmatan, yeah? services. Tetapi uh, setengah penulis dia hanya rujuk product. It's a product. So product consists of tadi. Maknanya ada satu bentuk physical dan ada satu bentuk yang uh, dalam bentuk perkhidmatan. Yeah. So again, product adalah knowledge asset for the company. Kenapa ya? Yeah? Sebab untuk menghasilkan satu produk, dia involve many R&D, yeah, research and development. They involve a uh, documentation. They involve patent, yeah, copyright, intellectual property, and etc. Yeah. So, dia spend banyak masa eh, untuk menghasilkan produk. Jadi, itu adalah asset of the, uh, can be considered as knowledge asset of the organization. 
Okey, ada soalan tak sementara ni untuk dua perkara ni process and product? Any question? No, clear eh? Okey. Next markets. Ya. Yeah. Then uh, before we go further, what is market? Normally we read uh, market to apa dia? Anybody? Pasaran. Pasaran. Uh, pasaran contohnya? Hmm. Macam mana kita nak sell kita punya produk tu? Maybe kita punya platform. Ya, yeah. it can be platform. Lagi? Macam Brand. mana how to? Yes, sorry siapa cakap tadi? Brand, branding. Branding, yes, brand. Brand, okay, bila kita kata brand, dia boleh kita kaitkan dengan uh, image, product image. Yeah. Uh, dalam uh, corporate sector, kalau berkaitan dengan services, ya, yeah, uh, dia panggil juga sebagai corporate image. Ya, yeah. corporate image. Corporate image contohnya apa? Color, yeah, warna. Uh, warna, contohnya sinonim, Selcom warnanya apa? Avon warna dia apa? Eh, dia, dia sinonim. Ya, bila kita tengok warna tu, oh kita tahu ini uh, warna ini belong to siapa. Logo ini uh, represent company mana. Okay. In this process, eh, uh, knowledge asset eh, from markets. Market ini contohnya adalah stock market. Equity, share, uh, then uh, customer. Yeah. Uh, market survey uh, Customer demand yeah. Customer feedback Customer complain yeah. Semua itu merujuk kepada market Selain daripada the product itself Alright And then The organization The organizations uh, Which also can be referred as Your stakeholders yeah. Stakeholders for the company. Siapa stakeholders untuk company itu? Can be the supplier, can be the distributors and then uh, your client. Yeah, client Client ni can be uh, divided into two categories. External and internal. External of course not eh, the, the buyer itself. But for internal, uh, normally refer to your own staff. Yeah? Your own researcher. Uh, your support staff. Yeah? Uh, management tiers. Yeah? Kita ada top management. Uh, middle management or lower management. Okay. So the organization that involve yeah, or the stakeholders that involve in the business process is also known as knowledge asset yeah, uh, of the company or uh, organization. And finally, technologies. Yeah, technology. Apa technology involved in that process? Uh, tadi ada sebut uh, tentang platform ya yeah, maybe uh, technologies uh, uh, regarding to uh, marketing ya yeah, marketing platform or marketing activity uh, technology for research and development process ya yeah, technology for creation for development dan sebagainya ya yeah. so semua perkara ini di dalamnya adalah uh, mengandungi yeah, knowledge asset for organizations. Yeah. Jadi mereka sangat uh, acknowledge uh, lima perkara ini memandangkan dia adalah knowledge asset for the company. Okay, any question so far? Any question? Yeah, so disimpulkan di sini, if you fail to manage this five component, they will influence your business process and at the same time, they uh, will influence your business objective. Yeah. So dia ada kesan eh, secara langsung di sini. Contohnya bagaimana? Sekiranya you tidak uh, memahami uh, perkara berkaitan market, Ya, contohnya berkaitan uh, demands of your, your customer, then it will uh, 
uh, effect eh, your uh, business activity here. Begitu juga dengan let's say stakeholders. Kalau kita jaga your stakeholders, dia akan influence yang ada di sini. Yeah, dan sebaliknya. Okay? So tak ada soalan eh? Soalan how, how, uh, so, how about the competitors? Uh, it falls under which category? Okay. Competitors, dia can be reside uh, di dalam sini, di dalam market. Dia juga boleh reside di dalam produk. But the best way uh, to uh, highlight eh, involvement of apa ni competitors ni adalah dalam organization. As stakeholders. In business company nowadays, they acknowledge competitors as their stakeholders as well. Because dia dapat respond daripada competitors ni. Nah, so kita tengok ya, bagaimana uh, contohnya uh, apa ni antara Lazada dan Shopee ya. Eh? Biasa uh, biasa gunakan Lazada, Lazada Shopee. Bagaimana they they compete each other. Ya, yeah, compete each other uh, menggunakan contohnya tarikh-tarikh ataupun event-event yang tertentu. Dan dia tengok eh, sebenarnya uh, Shopee and Lazada is just a platform Betul? Dia ada supplier yang sama, penjual yang sama. Tetapi apa yang dia manipulate di sini adalah offer by the platform itself. Ya, supplier tetap sama. Begitu juga dengan ISP, ya, Internet Service Provider by our telco company. Ya, so dia dia akan tengok ya, apa yang company A contohnya, company A offer, then dia akan kontra offer menggunakan dia punya strategi lah. Strategi apa? Mungkin package-package yang lebih uh, menarik. So, itu uh, boleh digunakan dalam inilah eh, lebih tepat. Uh, but for some company, information uh, pertaining to competitors, dia boleh recite juga di dalam market, contohnya market survey from the user demand eh, or customer demand. Uh, dan ada setengahnya yang dimasukkan di dalam produk. Nah, tetapi untuk diagram ini, the best way is to uh, apa, masukkan dalam ini, eh? the organization. Yeah, as the organization. As I mentioned just now, organization, there are two categories, can be from internal and external. But for competitors, put under external. Yeah? External organizations. Alright, any more questions? Okay, so proses yang uh, biasanya ya, biasanya terlibat ya, uh, dalam uh, apa uh, elemen dan the first element just now, yeah. so they includes these processes. Number one, develop knowledge or the uh, knowledge creation, yeah. knowledge ni knowledge creation lah. Uh, you familiar kan dengan proses ini? Knowledge creation, activity. Yeah. Uh, how you uh, acquire new knowledge, how to create new knowledge, capture, yeah, capturing knowledge, discovering. Okay, familiar tak dengan knowledge discovery? Or knowledge discovery. What is knowledge discovery? Yeah, knowledge discovery. Uh, knowledge discovery, for example, uh, recently, uh, Russian government uh, hmm. find out the vaccine of COVID nineteen, doctor. But okay, so okay, dia dia jumpa vaksin. How much they spend? How much they spend to uh, identify or to in, invent the vaccine? Uh, it's about million, million dollars. Million, eh? Million. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, time spent or man hours? Berapa lama katanya? Uh, since the COVID uh, uh, spread. Eh? Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, bila kita katakan uh, knowledge discovery ni, dia involve uh, more to uh, research and development activity. Yeah? 
research and development activity. Nah, kalau yang lain-lain, contohnya acquire, knowledge acquire, knowledge capturing itu, they totally different process. But for discovery, they need to spend a lot of uh, investment eh, uh, in discovery uh, process. Alright? Macam tadilah, eh, uh, dia menyebabkan duit yang banyak, masa, penyelidik, pakar dan sebagainya. Eh. Okay, then how to apply knowledge? Yeah. Develop knowledge ni, of course, they create a new asset. Yeah. They create a new uh, knowledge for the company, which means they are the asset, knowledge asset yang baru. Eh. But to apply new knowledge, they yeah, also uh, create, yeah, create a new asset. Yeah for the organization. Contohnya apa? You are the knowledge but you don't know how to apply those knowledge in your uh, daily uh, business process. Contohnya dalam um, apa ni uh, uh, Okay, saya pernah terlibat uh, dalam apa uh, pernah melihat eh, proses bagaimana uh, mi ya eh, mi mi apa tu mi, mi kuning ya eh, mi kuning dihasilkan ya eh, oleh sebuah SME lah di uh, Penang ya eh, satu masa dulu so uh, memang kita tahu dia ada proses-proses yang ketat ya eh, dalam kawalan makanan dan dia ada resipi-resipi yang perlu dipatuhi uh, tetapi eh, ada tendensi untuk ni yang dihasilkan tercemar eh, dalam sesuatu pengeluaran. Apabila pencemaran tu berlaku, contohnya ni akan jadi warna kuning. Uh, sorry, dia akan jadi warna merah. Jadi merah. Pencemaran ni sebab apa? Dia uh, udara yang ada di sekeliling kita ni dia memberikan kesan kepada uh, tindak balas yang eh, memberikan tindak balas kepada uh, bahan yang digunakan dalam itu menyebabkan dia bertukar warna eh, menjadi merah sebelum berada di pasar. Okay, formula dah ada. Prosesnya dah ada, SOP dah ada. Dia ikut proses yang betul. Tetapi, dia kadang-kadang handling. Yeah? Handling of the product. Uh, dia menyebabkan adanya pencemaran. Mungkin uh, tangan dia tak bersih. Ataupun mungkin mesin. Yeah? Mesin tu tak bersih. Menyebabkan pencemaran berlaku sebelum uh, apa, produk tersebut berada di pasaran. Uh, so, isunya kat sini Knowledge dah ada tetapi Adakah dia dia apa, dia apa uh, gagal eh, untuk use the knowledge appropriately in that process yeah? um, Selain daripada tu, contoh yang lain kat sini mungkin uh, execute Executing process, execute Okay, our government through their Uh, agencies, eh, our government dia ada policy, dia ada certain policy, dia ada dasar-dasar, uh, dasar. Dasar contohnya untuk uh, membasmi kemiskinan. Okay, when it's come to execute process, saya rasa yang ini you, you boleh bagi respon. What do you think? Boleh faham tak saya punya uh, gambaran? Government ada satu policy, dasarnya itu memang bagus, tetapi bila untuk execute polisi tadi ke peringkat uh, bawahan sampai ke peringkat masyarakat biasanya dia akan ada kadang-kadang eh, dia ada masalah dari segi execution dan juga penerimaan boleh faham tak? Yeah, Con contohnya kan? macam menyuntik dana memberi pinjaman ya yeah. uh, something like that uh, lah Ya, yeah, yeah. so itu yang saya maksudkan. Ya, yeah. maknanya di peringkat atas tu memang cantik dia punya dasar. Ya, yeah. uh, sama dulu macam GST. Ya, yeah. peringkat awal tu dia punya draft tu memang cantik. But when it come to execution, maknanya di peringkat bawah tu dia jadi lain. Uh, begitu juga dengan uh, sewaktu PKP. Ya, yeah. uh, dasar tu ada. Kemudian di peringkat operasi mungkin uh, dalam apa? Uh, tindakan PDRM sendiri, contohnya ada yang kena saman, ada yang tak, ada yang bagi lepas dan sebagainya. Betul? Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, 
itu kepelbagaian eh maknanya dari segi execution proses uh, pengetahuan ataupun uh, maklumat yang disampaikan tu penerimaannya berbeza-beza okey di situ okey uh, and then in terms of exploiting exploit ya yeah. uh, exploit uh, knowledge ya yeah. in terms of uh, for example uh, academic work or research activity yeah. how will you exploit information or knowledge for uh, better research finding for example ya yeah. uh, you dapat uh, macam ni ya yeah, untuk assignment ya yeah, untuk tugasan you cari bahan bahan yang sama but the way that you exploit your information and the way that you apply that information to your assignment to might be different they based on your apa ya uh, perception can be it can be your from your perception or your experience ya yeah? contohnya uh, mungkin uh, siapa uh, uh, Amiruddin nak buat tajuk yang sama dengan Azmi Yeah. Uh, assignment tadi tetapi pengalaman yang Azmi ada dan pengalaman yang Amirun ada berbeza yeah. walaupun dia dapat maklumat yang sama tetapi uh, the way that you apply will totally different yeah. different situations ok number three access knowledge yeah. the way that you apprise evaluate validating or verifying knowledge Yeah. So each of this activity, they will uh, produce uh, different um, finding, eh? different finding or different uh, result for your decision making process. Nah, yeah? Semua ni uh, menghasilkan uh, apa yang kita panggil sebagai knowledge asset. Yes. And then preserve knowledge, storing, a process of storing, securing, secure. Yeah, conserving, conservation, or retaining. Uh, pernah dengar knowledge retention in your previous subject? Yeah, there are the knowledge retention process. How to retain knowledge yeah, in uh, organization, for example. Yeah, so itu juga akan ada SOP nya yeah, and uh, can be part of knowledge asset as well. Uh, and then knowledge up. Uh, updating knowledge or knowledge updating uh, doctor uh, yes. back to knowledge retention tadi hmm. can you describe more detail knowledge retention ni how we gonna apply the knowledge retention okay uh, sebelum kita discuss about knowledge retention first let discuss about knowledge uh, biasa dengar brain drain brain drain Ah yes doktor. Ya. Yeah. So apa dia brain drain? Brain drain is uh, clueless. I mean like something like uh, brain drain ni we of hmm. course apa? Hmm. <laughs> Short of idea. Short of idea. Hmm. Okay. Uh, ada yang lain boleh bantu? Nanti saya ulas. Ada yang lain boleh bantu? Jihan, any idea? Same as uh, Cik Saiful cakap tu. Yeah. Dia macam habis idea, tak ada apa-apa lagi nak di, di apa, okay. produce. Yeah. So lebih pada macam bocor eh. <laughs> bocor dia punya brain. Uh, okay, actually yeah, brain drain ni adalah uh, the yeah, saya, saya, saya proof siapa ni Daliza. Yeah. Okay, brain drain ni yeah, sebenarnya adalah um, proses um, migrate, migrate, yeah, my, migrations of knowledge or migrations of your knowledge capital ya yeah, keluar daripada organisations. Contohnya Uh, brain drain boleh berlaku disebabkan perpindahan staff. Boleh berlaku disebabkan retirement. Ya. Yeah? Um, boleh berlaku juga disebabkan 
pindah tadi ada dua ya dia pindah to other organization atau pindah to other department ya yeah. uh, so to stop this brain drain ya yeah. to stop memang totally you can stop brain drain because sometimes uh, staff or employees ya yeah, they migrate to other company because of uh, better offer better offer ya yeah. better offer or can be uh, self satisfaction uh, retirement So you can uh, can do anything lah sebab retirement. Nah, jadi to uh, to stop brain drain, you must uh, design a strategy. So the strategy called knowledge retention. Yeah, knowledge retention strategy. Alright. Now, uh, apa dia knowledge strategy yang sesuai for that particular Uh, for your organization so you must design a policy or strategy to retain the knowledge not to retain your staff yeah knowledge retention strategy bukan kita nak retain staff tetapi how to retain the knowledge agaknya apa yang yang, yang boleh fikirkan di sini boleh tak kalau kita sebutkan yang macam kalau macam dalam government sector kan dia ada file major hmm. bila uh, certain staff tu dia berpindah, retired dia, yes. uh, staff yang akan datang akan refer pada file major tu tadi Yes, betul Untuk yeah. teruskan tugasan yang sebelum ni lah Ya, yeah. so that's one of the strategy yeah? uh, You capture the knowledge yeah? You capture the knowledge and then retain the process or the SOP in forms of um, apa tadi, file major ya yeah? uh, untuk company lain mungkin dia capture through uh, knowledge organization system KOS ya, yeah? dia ada portal that you need to upload your uh, skill ya, yeah? you, uh, any process uh, apa, codifying knowledge from uh, human experience or human brain to dokumen. Ini yang kita gunakan dalam proses uh, knowledge yang di atas ni tadi. Ya, acquire capture. Okey. Boleh faham penjelasan saya Cik Saiful? Okey doktor. Uh, Thank you. Jawab ya. Eh? So retain ya. Eh? Retaining is depend on your organization. Ya. Yeah? Uh, untuk setengah company mungkin dia uh, sediakan reward system ya yeah? yang lebih bagus. Contohnya bila staff nak pindah, dia offer, dia kontra dengan gaji yang lebih baik uh, Tetapi masih lagi uh, itu tidak menyelesaikan masalah uh, how to retain the employee's knowledge yeah? uh, Dia kena retain knowledge dia, bukan kita retain the staff Okay, next uh, Mana tadi update knowledge, evolve, improve, maintaining, refreshing uh, Ini through lifelong learning process Yeah, uh, for organization normally they have uh, uh, training, yeah, training module, uh, whether uh, internal or external training module. But the idea is to uh, equip uh, their staff with uh, lifelong learning uh, component, eh? and then uh, transfer knowledge, uh, communicating, deploy, yeah, disseminate, and sharing. Uh, in fact, uh, oral history nowadays uh, the uh, popular in uh, corporate organization. Yeah? Kenapa? Sebab to transfer the knowledge best man. And uh, transfer knowledge also part of retaining knowledge. Yeah? Kalau dikaitkan dengan preserve, yeah? you transfer uh, daripada senior officer to uh, junior staff or new staff, for example. Yeah? Kenapa? To retain, yeah? to retain the knowledge in that organization. And um, for some company. Dia require you to sign uh, apa ni ya, macam some sort of agreement ya? Agreement uh, yang berbentuk intellectual property Contohnya uh, dalam penghasilan uh, software tertentu ya, oleh uh, tekan sistem developer uh, Mereka dikendaki sign satu dokumen yang bila dia berpindah kepada organisasi lain Dia tidak boleh bawa apa-apa saja Uh, pengetahuan dia ataupun intellectual property of that product to other companies contohnya dia punya program code yeah? dia punya coding dan sebagainya yeah? juga tak boleh dibawa 
Ya. So uh, setengah company di Malaysia dah, dah menggunakan ini dah lama. Uh, saya bekerja di Mimos pada tahun 1999 dalam digital certificate masa tu. Uh, so itulah dokumen yang saya sign. Maksudnya kalau saya berpindah uh, berpindah kerja saya tak boleh kerja dalam company yang yang i uh, apa ni uh, business model yang sama iaitu digital certificate tadi. Saya tak boleh berpindah kepada company itu dalam tempoh lima tahun. Maksudnya selepas lima tahun baru, baru boleh saya bekerja dalam uh, industri atau bidang yang sama. So uh, transfer knowledge ni uh, banyak isu uh, intellectual property di sini. And then uh, transform knowledge. Yeah? You compile, formalize, standardize, epicety. Ataupun dekat sini ya uh, transform juga uh, proses codifying. Yeah? Codifying or codifications of knowledge yeah? daripada Uh, apa intangible to tangible forms. Okay, any question pertaining to uh, this process? Tadi eh? ya. Jadi semua proses ini uh, kita consider sebagai knowledge asset. Kerana apa? Setiap aktiviti aktiviti yang ada dalam domain ini akan menghasilkan proses kerja yang menghasilkan knowledge. Yeah? So it's part of knowledge asset as well. Okay, next. Okay, this is uh, knowledge organization. Yeah, definition. Let's define uh, what is knowledge organization. In broader meaning, knowledge organization is about the social divisions of mental labor. Example, the organizations of universities and other institutions for research and higher education, the structure of the discipline and profession, the social organizations of media, The production and dissemination of knowledge. Ya, tetapi ini broader meaning, ya, uh, which mean uh, general definitions of knowledge organization. In this definition, uh, the dia apa ya? Dia merujuk di sini kepada organization yang menghasilkan pengetahuan. Ya, generally is an organization that produce knowledge. That's why dia nyatakan di sini sebagai satu uh, example eh, organization of universities and research institutions or higher education. Ya, kenapa ya? Because uh, this institution uh, kita recognize ya, uh, organisasi ini sebagai uh, tempat ya, ataupun institusi yang uh, produce knowledge. Ya. Uh, but then uh, knowledge organization uh, to define ya, knowledge organization the more than that. Ya, dia bukan sahaja Uh, organisasi yang menghasilkan maklumat semata-mata. Ya, tetapi um, kita perlu melihat kepada narrow meaning ya, of the knowledge organization. Okay. Knowledge organization is about activities such as document description, indexing and classification performs in library for example bibliographical databases, archive and other kinds of memory institution by librarian, archivists, information specialist, subject specialist as well as by computer algorithm and layman. Okay, so pertama tadi saya define secara general which mean knowledge organization is the organization that produce knowledge. Yeah? Produce knowledge or apply knowledge in their uh, daily activities. But If you go by narrow, yeah, narrow or uh, more detail yeah, about knowledge organization, they refer kepada activities to describe. Saya rumuskan di sini activities to describe your knowledge access. Yeah? Activity to describe your knowledge asset. Knowledge asset apa? Yang tadi di sini. Semua proses-proses ni adalah knowledge asset. 
dan knowledge organization di sini yang merujuk kepada bagaimana kita describe knowledge asset so that your stakeholders will know uh, types of knowledge or knowledge yeah, that owned by your organization. Boleh faham tak penjelasan saya? Ada soalan? Questions? Yeah. So, ada dua uh, penjelasan yeah, untuk kita discuss about knowledge organization. Yeah, in broader meaning, knowledge organization is about organization that produce and apply knowledge. Number two, knowledge organization is the activities of the descriptions of your knowledge asset. Yeah, kita memberikan uh, deskripsi ataupun uh, the way to or strategy to let your user uh, easily can uh, retrieve or find your knowledge of your organizations. Okay? Tak apa. Uh, yang ini nanti you boleh tengok kemudian. Kalau tak faham boleh tanya, kita boleh discuss. Eh? Saya akan teruskan. Okay, knowledge organization involve two aspects. Number one, KOP, which represent knowledge organization processes. For example, the process of cataloging, subject analysis, indexing, classifications by humans or computers. Okay, for knowledge organization processes, yang ini you belajar kebanyakannya semasa degree dulu. Yeah. Uh, how to organize information or books uh, in the library, macam mana nak klaskan, macam mana to create the class number uh, untuk uh, macam-macam lagi. Yeah? Tetapi, for knowledge taxonomy, you will learn about knowledge organization system or the KOS. Are the concepts, selection concept with an indications of selected semantic relation. Example, a classification system, list of subject heading, tesaurai, ontologies, and other system of metadata. So, knowledge taxonomy, ya, taxonomy, dia berada di dalam ontologi. Ya, berada dalam ontologi. So, taxonomy, therefore, is a knowledge organization system. Apa ada knowledge dia? Knowledge tadi, knowledge asset. Yang atas tadi ada lima perkara asas tadi, lima aktiviti asas. Kita akan uh, organize knowledge yang reside dalam proses tadi menggunakan ontologis. Sebelum ni, dia belajar tentang bagaimana nak membuat index, bagaimana nak membuat catalog dan sebagainya untuk you organize contohnya buku di library ataupun information agency. But for knowledge asset, you need knowledge organization system to organize your knowledge asset or to class your knowledge asset. Okay, boleh faham? Any question? Uh, what is the meaning of ontology? Ontologi. Ini nanti yang saya akan jelaskan lepas ini. <laughs> yeah. Saya akan uh, go through one by one in detail. Yeah. Untuk bila semester ni semua akan belajar perkara. Tetapi more to ontologi of course. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So kita tinggalkan the knowledge organization process. Yang ini kita dah tak buat. Yeah. Di peringkat masters, you akan belajar, the, uh, especially for knowledge management, you will learn uh, or penetrate more on knowledge organization system. Yeah? Okay. Hmm. 
So ini adalah knowledge organization system. Boleh nampak ke? Boleh eh? Macam mana? So ini yang akan you belajar nanti. Agak-agak macam ni nak withdraw ke subjek ni? Okay. So dalam organization system, eh, knowledge organization, organization system, you need to uh, organize, identify, organize and groups knowledge assets according to maybe their functions or maybe based on their structure or maybe based on processes. Yeah? So kita akan melihat di sini, yeah, contohnya ini knowledge organization system, unstructured text. Yeah, unstructured text yang ini contohnya. Uh, dia juga ada term and concept list. Yeah, term and concept list. For example, dictionary, gazetteers, glossary, tag list. Okay, pernah tak dengar yang ini? Foxonomist. Foxonomist. Tak pernah dengar? Eh? Tak tapi, pernah. Tetapi sebenarnya you biasa buat Foxonomist. Tak pernah dengar eh? tetapi uh, boleh katakan you memang biasa buat Foxonomy. Apa dia Foxonomy? Cerita rakyat kan? Cerita rakyat? Fox 4. Fox 4. Okay. Foxonomy sini adalah um, kaedah sistem eh. Kaedah uh, sistem. Bagaimana sistem uh, menguruskan um, apa ya? Searching yang dibuat oleh pengguna yang kita gunakan dalam sosial media dan contoh yang paling mudah yang akan difaham adalah penggunaan hashtag or tagging <coughs> familiar with the concept hashtag or tagging kan ada dalam you punya twitter ataupun dalam you punya insta hashtag apa dia Biasa tak gunakan tu? Ataupun tahu? Biasa, biasa. Ada, ada. So, apa tujuan you hashtag? Uh, saya nak fokus pada topik tu. Okay. Yeah, maknanya you minimize scopes of searching. Uh, or you highlight uh, the search term or the, the keywords to the social group, to your social groups. Yeah? You nak highlight yang itu. So you gunakan foxonomies. Foxonomies tu adalah terminologi ni. Apa dia punya method penggunaan hashtag. And maybe some of you, the, you list down your hashtag. Kan, you buat satu posting, dia ada tujuh lapan hashtag dalam tu kadang-kadang. Yang itu kita panggil tag list. Here. Alright? So uh, inilah eh, kita kaitkan dengan foxonomies. Kenapa foxonomies? Sebab foxonomies ini dia bukan satu uh, apa ya dihasilkan oleh satu uh, organisasi, tetapi foxonomies produce by the netizen. Kita panggil netizen. Your 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 social group. There, there is no formal organisation in that process, but the groups, the social or the community itself, they create the uh, most popularly used term ya yeah? ataupun term yang dia biasa gunakan ya yeah? dalam proses sesuatu proses ataupun sesuatu aktiviti hmm. mengikut apa kita panggil trending hmm. ya yeah? netizen trending it based on the trend the current trend sebab itu dipanggil sini sebagai fox sonomis from the social groups okay And concept list or term, ya, yeah, dia juga produce control vocabulary, ya. Yeah. And if you learn previously uh, about our cataloging, uh, classification, uh, yang itu kita panggil control vocabularies, control vocabularies. Ya, yeah, in this process, you need to refer to a specific standards or a specific document 
such as ACR, RDA, DDC, LCSH, or any manual to produce your search term. Yeah, to produce term or keyword to retrieve your document. Yeah. Berbanding dengan foxonomy tadi, you menggunakan hashtag. You create your own terms. But for control vocabulary, you need to refer, for example, to DDC untuk assign number for retrieval process. Or you need to refer to ISBD 8 area to produce the 8 area for uh, books description. Contohnya macam itu. Okay. Uh, ada juga classification scheme, subject heading, index, yeah, ada juga thesaurus, frame, and ontologies. Okay, now, taxonomy. Yeah. So, ini yang akan kita belajar eh, bagi subjek ini. Taxonomy, dia ada corporate taxonomy yeah, for this subject. Uh, ada juga website taxonomy or web taxonomy. Yeah. Taxonomy ini uh, adalah, uh, ini you punya assignment juga nanti. Yeah. You kena hasilkan satu web taxonomy, uh, which mean taxonomy or structure for website. Yeah. Structure for website. For example, directories or menu from the websites. Uh, ada juga taxonomy berkaitan scientific scientific taxonomy contohnya uh, dalam uh, science ya yeah, dalam science geology dan uh, genealogies what is genealogies genealogies gen genetic family history for example ya yeah, family history of apa dia science family history of um, apa katakan uh, Flora and fauna, ya, tumbuh-tumbuhan dan sebagainya. Ya. Okay, corporate taxonomy ni saya akan explain semester ni nanti ya macam mana. Ya. Uh, selain daripada itu kita ada semantic network, semantic network, networking, ya. For networking juga ada um, knowledge organization system dan yang ini adalah ontology. Tadi Azmi tanya. Apa dia ontologi? Agak-agak boleh, boleh faham tak tengok dari sini pecahan dia? Apa maksud dia? Ada idea apa dia ontologi? Tak ada? Apa pecahan bagi ontologi? Mereka paling informal, formal, semi-formal. <laughs> formal. Okay. Alright. Dalam uh, bidang kita, eh, dalam bidang uh, information science, ontologi uh, can be referred as a representations of uh, representations of apa ya things ya yeah? bagaimana kita mewakilkan uh, perkataan ataupun keyword to certain things certain activity or certain goods uh, dia boleh jadi informal boleh jadi formal or can be both. contohnya dalam satu proses in manufacturing dia ada satu step step tu dia can be uh, formal steps can be uh, formal terms formal terms yang uh, boleh apa standard standard terms standard terms that can be used widely but at the same time staff contohnya dia ada dia punya term sendiri yang hanya staff tersebut saja yang faham tak faham lagi ya eh? tak boleh faham kan okey saya bagi contoh 
dalam you punya environment, you familiar dengan term ODL? What is ODL? Online distance learning. Yes, eh? Online distance learning. Okay. Cuba you gunakan perkataan ODL ni di tempat lain. Mungkin you, you apa, pergi dekat masjid tu, you cerita tentang ODL. Ataupun you pergi ke pasar, pergi ke Tesco ke mana, you cerita tentang ODL. Agak-agak orang faham tak? Tak. Ya? Kemungkinan besar dia tak faham. Eh? So, dalam you punya uh, peer groups, kita panggil formal ontologis. Yeah? ODL, the term ODL, dia formalized because of your work nature or your surrounding. Yeah? Dia jadi formal. Tetapi, um, dalam keadaan masyarakat publik contohnya, mungkin orang tak faham. Hanya sekelompok hmm. saja yang faham. Yeah? So, untuk ini ya kita panggil sebagai kita panggil kita rujuk ini sebagai common communication is a common communication you gunakan sebab apa is very common that you use the term and uh, your groups or your peer faham proses-proses uh, faham makna dia ontologies they differ to uh, can be process can be uh, any words ya yeah? any words that you prefer to use for your communication in for example manufacturing activity in uh, business process or in social communication ya yeah? sebarang bentuk perkataan or keywords ya yeah? uh, nanti kita akan ada topik lain tentang perkara ini secara detail okey question uh, yang ini you tak perlu nak hafal eh? Kalau saya keluarkan dalam test ni boleh boleh jawab exact dia macam ni. Kena hafal lah. Nanti saya keluarkan dalam test. Okay. So dah, dah hilang kata di atas ni. Saya tak tahu dia punya original words dia apa. Uh, tapi tak apa. Uh, okay, let's let's look at point number two. Eh. Knowledge organisasi system will provide an overview of the contents of their knowledge asset. Yeah. So daripada knowledge organisasi system, yeah, kita assume macam ni ya. Eh. Bila kita tengok knowledge organization system for the company. Ini satu company. Ya. Ini adalah satu company contohnya. Kita tengok knowledge organization system dan melalui dia punya activity-activity of knowledge ya, in that company. Boleh tak you conclude company ini sebenarnya dia mengenai apa? Contoh. Tapi dia bukan inilah. Bukanlah ini kan. Maknanya ini penjelasan yang lain lah. Saya bagi saya cuba saya bagi contoh di sini. Ya. Sementara tu ada soalan? question tak ada okey saya tunggu yang ini Okey, boleh nampak tak? Boleh nampak? Tak clear. Tak clear? Ya. Yeah. Boleh? Nampak, nampak. 
Nampak? Boleh. Okey, nampak doktor. Okey. So ini adalah uh, knowledge organization knowledge organization system for a company ya. Bila tengok ni tengok dia punya terms ataupun keywords you boleh conclude tak company dia business dia apa? Home furniture. Home home. Home furniture. Hmm. You boleh predict company yang company apa? IKEA. IKEA. Ya. Sebab yeah. IKEA. Tak nak macam IKEA aje. IKEA. Sebab IKEA kan nama dia fancy sikit. Ha. Ah. Okey, so Tania Amirudin, so dapat bawa ke IKEA. Ni <laughs> kena minta yang IKEA lah. <laughs> ah. So uh, maklumat ini Ya, taksonomi ni saya uh, ambil daripada dia punya website ya, Maknanya ini dia punya web taksonomi ya. So dengan kita tengok hmm. macam mana cara penyusunan dia Kita boleh predict ya, uh, Ini company ni business operation dia apa Dan uh, in fact Amirudin dia boleh teka dengan betul company apa ya. So uh, this taksonomi dia represent ya yeah, represent the uh, company tadi. Ya yeah, maknanya dengan tengok kita tahu apa company itu. Ya yeah, dia describe eh, produk ini. Dia describe the nature of or the business model of the company. Ya yeah, boleh faham eh? Okay, knowledge organization system characteristics. Knowledge organization system, they represent uh, knowledge and asset, yeah, and uh, they are the value. Yeah? Knowledge organization characteristic number one, they must be the value in that asset. Yeah, the value uh, that represent the company. Number two. The same knowledge asset can be characterized in different ways depending on the knowledge organization system that is used. For example, uh, ini lah. Tengok tadi ya, eh. kat sini dia ada dua. Dia ada dalam term and concept list and ada, ada, at the same time, they exist juga in concept and relationship structure. So, ada dua kategori. There must be sufficient commonality between the concept expressed in QS and the real object to which the concept refer. As I said earlier, um, so the best way is to, is to use mixed structure, yeah? uh, which means from the control vocabs and from the common uh, communications. Yeah? Dari, uh, menggunakan uh, suggestion by the standards ataupun manual tetapi pada masa sama kita merchkan dia dengan our uh, communication uh, language or our communication lah. Nah, jadi dia lebih mudah eh, untuk pengguna uh, identify uh, or retrieve the uh, knowledge, eh, your knowledge asset. And knowledge asset or knowledge organization system must be able to connect knowledge asset with its representation in the system. Yeah, you must connect your knowledge asset and the system. The retrieval system tu uh, macam ni eh? um, semua pernah gunakan uh, setiap hari gunakan contohnya uh, Google search engine yeah? setiap hari dia gunakan Google search engine apa agaknya strategi eh, yang digunakan oleh Google untuk membolehkan you search dengan mudah apa searching strateginya 
compared to Yahoo search engine Siapa yang biasa gunakan Yahoo search engine? Okay, uh, Google lah bagi saya dia user friendly hmm. Lepas tu dia ringan like, like daripada user Dia ringan okay. Alright, in terms of searching strategy? Uh, bagi saya Google dia lebih deep searching macam Yahoo dia dia surface searching bagi saya lah dia punya beza result dia tu bila kita search guna okay. Google dengan Yahoo uh, Pernah kaji tak digunakan teknik apa? Uh, tak pernah doktor tak pernah. Uh, okay. So uh, for Google uh, dia panggil intelligent search intelligent search Uh, Google dia introduce uh, intelligent search ni the first first company yang introduce intelligent search which mean uh, you boleh search apa saja karakter dalam dia punya search menu apa saja karakter can be single character or can be any words yeah, can be any words sebab dia intelligent dia ada uh, dia uh, recognize your character but for Yahoo uh, dia menggunakan human indexing teknik human indexing teknik human index which mean index search or search term formulated by human you assign the search term to your document Contohnya bila you buat website, you identify keywords, certain keywords and you provide those keyword or you give the keyword to Yahoo search engine to be list on their search engine. Dia, dia, dia susun dalam bentuk index. Index. Yang mana you boleh browse index tadi. Nanti lepas ni you tengok, you compare between Yahoo and Google. Tetapi untuk Google, you uh, boleh search any uh, character eh, in their search. Uh, apa tu? Uh, bar. Any character you boleh search. Tetapi untuk Yahoo, you boleh browse because they list yeah, they list the search term uh, in their uh, website. Yeah, so itu beza dia. Okay, types of knowledge organization system. Uh, so basically there are three. Term list, for example, glossary, dictionaries and gazetteers. Classification and categories, subject headings, classification schemes, taxonomies and categorization schemes. And there's also a subject relationship list. For example, the use of BT, broader term, narrow term, related term, eh? or semantic network, uh, national language, ontologies. Eh? So ontologies ni uh, specifically produced by or developed by uh, knowledge management communities. Uh, that's why uh, taxonomy is part of this, eh? subject and relationship list. Untuk ini, Glossary ni, uh, term list, yeah? uh, term list dia hasilkan berdasarkan contohnya list, yeah? list of words, glossary, dictionary, gazetteers, index. Dia dihasilkan untuk list, yeah? from list. Untuk classification and categories, uh, you need to refer to uh, control vocabulary yeah? to produce subject heading, classification scheme, taxonomy. Yeah? So you need to refer to certain standards and those standards call control vocabulary. Contohnya apa? DDC, LC, LCSH, ISBD dan sebagainya. Whereas for subject and relationship list, they can be uh, control vocab as well. You boleh tengok control vocab contohnya untuk mendapatkan thesaurus or thesauri uh, by BT, NT and RT. A broader term, narrow term or related term. But most of the time, you may create or develop the term 
subject or relationship list based on your communication language. Yeah? Based on your communication language or common communication language. Yeah? Juga dipanggil di sini natural language as well. Alright. Phases of perception. Yeah? Granular social network. Yeah? The F words. F words. Yeah? Collective. Contohnya dekat sini, seorang yang introduce the words or the terms. Example, ODL just now. And then, collective yeah, digunakan oleh a specific community. The ODL now. Yeah. Siapa yang gunakan? You lah. Yeah. Dalam academic uh, community, they use ODL term. Yeah, secara collective. Okay. Now, taxonomy versus foxonomy. Taxonomy produce for corporate organization, but foxonomy mainly uh, produce or develop by the customer or user. Nah, ini yang saya uh, sebut tadi, kadang-kadang juga ontologi. Eh? Nah, disebut juga ontologi. Tetapi foxonomy ni uh, lebih kepada your Kemudian apa tadi? Hashtag yeah. uh, Hashtag list So itu adalah user The social group the Social group dia produce the term But for, uh, for uh, taxonomy uh, Mainly for corporate organization Which refer to product uh, Boleh uh, faham ni eh, perbezaan ni Gambaran dia macam mana? Ini untuk business community But for taxonomy mainly for uh, Social community uh, Social groups Uh, sekarang ni apa eh? yang popular dekat sini? Azmi ada cakap something ke? Uh, 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 daripada taxonomy versus taxonomy tu hmm. uh, Tengok area kenapa dah ada macam yang yang Ni, uh, dotted line, line ni? Ah, ya, yeah, dia dotted line Okay, so setengah term kita boleh gunakan uh, Contohnya, dia dalam corporate Tetapi Marketing, dia tengok dari segi marketing, pengguna dia lebih familiar dengan satu term. So, term tu kita boleh gunakan. Uh, begitu juga dengan foxonomy. Foxonomy dia tengok dalam bisnes, dalam corporate dia gunakan term tu. So, dia gunakan term di dalam hashtag. So, kalau kita nak kaitkan dengan produk, apa banyak macam ni? Doktor, macam mudah.com tu, some product upload by company and some product upload by private or individual. Is it the taxonomy or foxonomy? Okay, that one the product kan, tetapi ini adalah uh, dalam knowledge organization, dia adalah satu term yang kita gunakan drift the product description. Contoh macam ni ya Cik Saiful, di dalam library kita gunakan contohnya uh, title untuk retrieve buku. Betul? Boleh faham eh? Kita gunakan title ataupun author untuk retrieve buku. Tetapi dalam corporate macam mana kita nak retrieve experience? Sebab dia knowledge asset. How to retrieve knowledge asset of the organization? Or how to retrieve information about certain program. How to retrieve uh, internet packages from Cellcom, contohnya. You search by Apple. Ah, macam mana? Kalau walk in to the customer service department <laughs> Walk in to the uh, customer service and then uh, tengok punya katalog Ah, uh, katalog, pamphlet, uh, pergi dia punya website, uh, website. Uh -huh. So itu itu juga satu kaedah Tetapi ya, eh, company ini, Cellcom contohnya Dia ada, dia namakan package-package tu betul lah Goal contohnya 
goal, Cellcom goal apa. Cellcom uh, premium ke platinum. Eh, dia ada kan? Dia punya nama-nama tu. So, itu juga satu kaedah eh, taxonomy. Uh, berkaitan soalan tadi, adakah produk upload by company or uploaded by uh, end user boleh rujuk kepada ini Ya, yes. sebenarnya konteks dia lain Itu produk eh? Tetapi yang saya nak katakan di sini Dia adalah search term Or knowledge, asset That reside in the product Doktor, soalan Ya yeah. Contoh dia kan, macam Pitar kan Pitar, ok Ok, uh, dia promote melalui website kan Ok Ok, kita boleh panggil itu sebagai corporate kan Promote apa Uh, contoh dia macam dia promote untuk uh, guna online database kan? Hmm. Okay. Okay, kita, kalau kita tengok sekarang ni, uh, librarian banyak uh, ada uh, Instagram kan? Hmm. Uh, so dia promote uh, melalui Instagram, okay. so dia ada hashtag bagai semua tu kan? Itu okay. boleh kita panggil foxonomy tak? Hmm. Okay, kita tengok sini. Okay. Okay, eh. so knowledge of the knowledge system Dia ada tiga perkara ni Okay, kalau misalkan kata searching tadi Dia ada melibatkan search Search, uh, katakan bahan ataupun database Dia akan menggunakan ini Tetapi untuk tujuan marketing eh, Your question just now is For marketing process kan? Betul ya? Eh? Perhati for marketing process. Ah ya betul betul betul. Ya, so kalau for marketing process dia akan menggunakan ini. Okay. Sebab apa? Dia they want to highlight their services. Okay. Bukan highlight database, bukan highlight buku baru. Ya betul betul betul. Faham. Okay. Jadi soalan tadi uh, Cik Saiful dia tanya adakah uh, yang kita per customer upload produk eh, produk by customer or produk by company yang itu di luar konteks ini sebab apa uh, isu dia adalah bagaimana uh, kedua-dua uh, institusi tadi sama ada customer or uh, sorry uh, individu or company How they uh, promote or highlight their product okay. Dia bukan, kita tak tengok eh, sama ada individu ataupun company Tetapi bagaimana dia highlight their product to the user or their community So dua perkara itu Masih confused lagi eh Tapi kelas akan datang nanti awak akan tengok lebih uh, Lebih apa, uh, detail Uh, my experience yeah, from previous uh, classes yeah, hanya pada minggu ketiga atau minggu keempat baru pelajar faham yeah, sebenarnya taksonomi berkenaan apa yeah, sebab apa tau you are familiar dengan proses uh, library uh, jadi to shift yeah, from uh, control vocab to taksonomi to will take time uh, unless you came from the world Yeah, that's totally different. Yeah, corporate world dia memang uh, dia uh, boleh boleh faham proses ni. Yeah. Dia macam dia macam tudung ni lofa lah doktor. Dekat ha. Togo kan ada jual tudung ni lofa yeah. kan. At the Betul. same time dekat media sosial pun ada customer yang ada. upload uh, tudung ni lofa. Uh, yeah. So some sort like taxonomy and taxonomy lah. Uh, macam dekat Togo tadi jual tudung ni lofa. Dekat ha. social media uh, dia orang hmm. hashtag Uh, jual tu dunia lofa juga. Yeah, Tapi yeah. ni tak ori, yang tu original. Uh, <laughs> like ha, uh. Cuma pe, cuma yang kita panggil taksonomi di sini bukan tudung tu. Tetapi dia punya hashtag tadi. Dia punya platform tu. Platform uh, from media social upload yes. the tu dunia lofa. Dia, dia macam ni. Bagaimana you nak linkkan produk tu dunia lofa tadi kepada pengguna? Boleh faham? Bagaimana you nak linkkan tudung tadi kepada pengguna? Adakah menggunakan kaedah taksonomi atau menggunakan kaedah foksonomi? 
kalau di library dia linkkan buku kepada pengguna dengan menggunakan control vocabulary. Eh, so dua perkara berbeza. Eh, tak apa je siapa nanti kita uh, saya jelaskan dengan detail. Okay, uh, personal involved in uh, taxonomy process uh, knowledge skill asset and experience yeah. so human capital lah. semua human capital or knowledge workers yeah. knowledge worker uh, can be uh, identify yeah, as the personnel involved in this process yeah. semua daripada kita sebab apa kita produce knowledge we capture we produce we utilize apply and disseminate knowledge yeah. who should develop uh, actually everyone lah, yeah, from the list yeah. uh, anybody that work on uh, knowledge yeah the uh, should should be able eh, to uh, use or to develop uh, corporate taxonomy uh, nanti kita akan uh, pada kelas uh, minggu depan uh, kita akan start the process yeah, of taxonomy development okay so that's all for my lecture today yeah uh, and uh, normally uh, week two Uh, you masih lagi kurang faham insyaallah by next class you akan uh, clear enough uh, what is uh, taxonomy and uh, taxonomy dan juga yang lain-lain okay any questions any question <coughs>